today because he <coughs> so yeah um, never mind, I... and he will um it is Norman Smith who um, <coughs> uh, um I'd love to ask him when he comes up on our uh, on our database he uh, is speaks for the Vermont Ethical Health Care Mr. Smith? <coughs> Mr. Smith, can you hello, Mr. Smith, can you hear me? Yeah, it's sort of breaking up. Okay, well that's all right. I can break up. You're not breaking up at all. Okay. Um, and um, but I do, um, as I said to uh, the committee, I uh, we seem to have had a mixed um, communication or mixed mixed signals um, because I understand that you had gotten um, an invitation to submit something in writing prior to this or to come to the public hearing. Um, I didn't know that, so I sent you the email today, and I'm glad that you can testify right now and around the room 10 of the 11 members of the committee are here right now um, and then as I understand you've testified in downstairs in Senate yes I did in Senate Health and Welfare so you know that there are interested parties uh, as well um, listening so okay. um, Mr. Smith if you could um, start your testimony, we'll let you go through it, and as you do that, if you could um, identify yourself. We, on our database, you are speaking for the Vermont Ethical Health Care Alliance. For yeah, sort of, and also personally. Okay. Okay, mm -hmm. so Madam Chairman and members of the committee, uh, thank you for allowing me to testify regarding Proposal 5, Declaration of Rights, Rights and Personal Reproductive Liberty. My name is Norman Smith. I was born and raised in St. Johnsbury, graduating from St. Johnsbury Academy in 1973. I attended the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, graduating in 1977 with a bachelor's degree in urban studies and planning. I then studied law at the Boston University School of Law, graduating in 1980. I clerked for, in 1980 for Albert W. Barney, Jr the then Chief Justice of the Vermont Supreme Court. I now serve on the Vermont Supreme Court's Probate Court Oversight Committee and Probate Court Rules Committee. I am a sole practitioner in Essex Junction, where much of my practice focuses on probate, wills, trusts, hours of attorney, and advanced directives. I help and serve many elderly and disabled clients, and over the years, I have managed the finances of several elderly clients who had no one who could help them. I have served as a court appointed guardian for several people. <coughs> Proposal 5's stated purpose is to protect personal reproductive autonomy. The proposed amendment, however, does not define personal for reproductive testimony. What personal reproductive autonomy means, therefore, will not be determined by the people of Vermont through their legislature. Rather, it will be defined by the Vermont Supreme Court. Reproductive rights may well change over time. Reproductive rights are not limited to abortion. They could include the following. Human cloning for reproductive purposes, gestational surrogacy trafficking achieved by in vitro fertilization, and then followed by human embryo transfer, and after the birth, the handing over of a born human child in exchange for payment. Trafficking in human, it could also result in trafficking 
a human embryo creation, the creation of a human embryo by in vitro fertilization and the subsequent sale or trade of such human embryos for implantation in another woman's womb for the purposes of reproduction. It could result, could include designer babies, the creation of designer embryos using gene editing techniques and the implementation, in, in, implantation and birthing of such genetically modified human beings. Additionally, the word autonomy is not defined in the proposal. This could raise several issues, including would the autonomy include the right, would the autonomy right undercut criminal prohibitions related to age of consent or sexual assault if a minor girl sought to become pregnant with the assistance of a man over the age of 18? Would a minor girl's right to personal reproductive autonomy be infringed if such a man were prosecuted for sexual contact with the minor? Proposal 5 may also require state funding, funding of any of the above treatments. The overbroad language of Proposal 5 might be used to argue that economically disadvantaged people have a constitutional right to in vitro fertilization, human cloning, gestational surrogacy, free parent embryos, or any other reproductive technology, and that the state owes them a duty to subsidize or fund these practices. The state is already required to pay for abortions for those who qualify as a result of a Vermont court decision based upon Vermont's constitution. This is doubly troubling because we cannot predict what future reproductive technologies may be developed. This amendment would leave it to the Vermont Supreme Court, not the legislature, to make the policy decisions about these issues. The proposal requires a compelling state interest in order to allow regulation. I have not been able to find a clear test for what constitutes a compelling state interest. It would appear in the cases that I have reviewed that it is simply the court which determines whether regulation has a compelling state interest. So this proposal again leaves it up to the Vermont Supreme Court to determine whether a regulation has a compelling state interest. By requiring this state standard, the legislature is giving up its ability to re regulate reproductive technologies that may be created in the future. The cases do not appear to provide a clear test for what a least restrictive means might be. In the cases I have reviewed, the court simply makes a determination based upon its judgment of the facts of the case. Again, this proposal leads us to the Vermont Supreme Court to determine whether regulation accomplishes its goal through a least restrictive means. In closing, Proposal 5 is so open-ended and vague that many unintended consequences will result. Rather than the legislature, the Vermont Supreme Court will make many policy decisions with respect to reproductive rights. I urge this committee and the House to reject its adoption. And I'm happy to take any questions that the committee members have. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Um, Councilman Hall, you questions? Mr. Smith, thank you very much. Thank you for your testimony. It is now on our website for um, us to review um, again and for others to review who are looking for it. Thank you for your time. And thank you for allowing me to testify. Absolutely. Have a good day, everyone. You too. Have Bye -bye. a nice day. <clears throat> um, the other um, testimony um, that I would like to read um, and <coughs> Julie is now posted. Um, I uh, received a communication from um, UVMMC um, about um, their statement, um, <coughs> which they have um, shared with their all of their staff. Um, on Wednesday or Thursday. And, um, I believe that you have, it, it would have to be, UVMMC will have to be refreshed. Um, it was, um, uh, you know, at the University of Vermont Health Network, decisions about reproductive health, including abortion, are the concern of the patient and their provider, as is the case with all medical care. We support state laws including a constitutional amendment to protect reproductive rights. This includes the right to contraception 
and to safe legal abortion. We also support the right of individual health care providers to elect to not participate in abortion procedures. Um, I thought it was important for this committee to see this statement. If you recall, during our um, discussion of uh, age 57, we had individual physicians speaking, individual health care providers speaking, speaking on behalf of themselves or the professional <coughs> organization. Um, and uh, I, <coughs> so I just thought that was important for people to have that as well. Um, I guess I would just like you to be in the hot seat. That's your thing. Um, in terms of um, some of the comments that were just made by um, uh, Mr. Smith in terms of what would be definitely allowed mm -hmm. under Proposition 5 on um, wanted to, to get your some of your um, feedback on that. Um, sure. We've already talked and we've already talked a bunch and people have had different <clears throat> views on whether things are clear in terms of language. But this um, Sure. So I'm just saying this, um, but I'd be glad okay. to I'm, I'd be glad to comment on um, Sorry, cer I certainly. Sorry, the same testimony isn't made downstairs. I apologize. I I have not I have not okay. seen it before, but um, I'm glad to provide some comments on at least some of it. Um, so for the record, Bryn Hare from Legislative Council. Um, I think the committee has talked about the word autonomy. Um, that's a word that can be found in the dictionary. It means uh, the right to self-govern, to make decisions about oneself. Um, <clears throat> the question of would this autonomy um, somehow pro prohibit a criminal prosecution for a person who commits statutory rape? I would say the answer to that is no. Um, the state has a compelling interest in prohibiting sex with a minor. Um, and Proposition 5, the wording of Article 22, is not going to um, is not going to somehow override our statutory rape laws. Um, and I would just emphasize for the committee that that's a good example of what uh, compelling state interest is: is um, the state interest in prohibiting sex with a minor. Thank you. Um, other questions? We could have, Madam Chair, we could have five lawyers sit in that chair and say five different things. That's why I wanted to get a judge here. I'm just going to make that point again. Because that's who's going to make the decision when, with this, if this passes. And no disrespect to anyone. And Topper, I'd like to comment that what a judge is going to say is that a judge can't comment without the specific facts specific to the situation. Yep. Um, that there's not a cookie cutter yep. um, for the criteria. And right. so um, it's. We could give them a hypothetical. And, 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 her. and, and they wouldn't case. be able. Answer that. Well, they'd be able to give you a decision based on the, the language. I mean, that's this is my opinion. Okay, no, I, right, so. and I'm just sharing my opinion. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, other questions for Bryn so we can get her, I mean, otherwise um, we can have a discussion and I would entertain a motion. Do you have other questions for Bryn? Bryn, thank you. Thank you. Um, um, can you put, I'm sorry, um, Logan, can you put us what we are? Um, I will, I will now share that we don't move 
uh, Proposition 5 out of the committee. Second. I've said from the beginning <clears throat> when this first came to us that the way it's written there are I, it was interesting when I read this here too, there are too many unintended consequences that, that in my mind come out of this and um, I've mentioned a couple of them and th there's some more here and um, I, I that's that's why I'm doing this. I think I think it's going to do more harm than, than good. And we have a bill that we passed in this committee and on the floor that is being worked on. Mm -hmm. That is clear. My major concern with this uh, proposition going forward is the implication it would have on potential life. Uh, not just potential life, but the life of a viable uh, human being at 20, 26 weeks in in the future. I have a feeling there's going to be more and more emphasis placed on the fact that this is a uh, living human being and should have a, a right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And uh, this proposition would further complicate uh, laws going forward to protect the life of a viable human being. And for that reason, I, you know, I, with the topper, I'm opposing this proposition going forward. I will be opposing your motion because I support um, moving uh, Proposition 5 forward. And I support it because Personally, I support this, and I believe that, uh, similar to the statement that was, I just read from the <coughs> Health Network, which I just got an email, it took so long because it's seven different boards, so it wasn't just three people. <coughs> it, but um, that uh, reproductive um, decisions about reproduction are <coughs> best made to an individual and their um, physician, and that for 40 years, you know, and then I supported the, the law that we had before. My other reason for supporting this is the ultimate outcome of this process is this brings it to the people of Vermont. So if I am wrong, if I am in the minority of the people of Vermont, they will speak. Um, and I think that on, I believe that on something as important as this, that the people of Vermont um, deserve um, the ability to, to say whether or not they believe that personal reproductive autonomy is a fundamental value. say that I agree with Madam Chair on both of those points. I also just agree that the individual and their physician should have the right to make decisions about their health care in general. Everything should be between the person and their physician and that whether or not they're um, a female, male, um, I think that's important. And I also really do, I'm really supportive of bringing this to the people that um, there are a lot of things we decide here that I, there's this little piece of me that wishes that we could bring more to the people to tell us how they feel about a um, position that is, that is difficult, that where we really argue and talk for a long time on the floor. And we all know that isn't very many things. But every 
once in a while there is one that goes on and, and you, you do want to hear from the people. That's why a lot of us do surveys and things like that. So um, I'm really interested in this and feel, feel good about voting. Um, I agree with you and you. <laughs> I do believe it should go to the people. Um, I agree with Carl on the issue and, and, and Topper on the issue that uh, I find it distressing that the issue, uh, there's no no willingness to differentiate between viable and unviable. Um, and so that's where I am. Um, I, while I personally wouldn't choose uh, to have an abortion because of my religious beliefs, I absolutely support this as a right for women, and I don't feel I have the right to determine for everyone else what the lay of the land is. Um, I am petrified with what is happening in this country around the rights of women and their ability, even since we passed age 57, what has happened since then in terms of eroding the rights. And I absolutely feel like um, this is an, an essential thing that we have to bring to the people for them to speak. Um, I will absolutely be supporting this. I feel similarly to what you just said, Mary Beth. Um, and um, there's probably in the time I've been here, I haven't received much more email than about this particular subject. Um, well, last year probably made some exception. <laughs> um, uh, and I, I feel like people are asking for the opportunity to be heard. And um, as you were saying, Jessica, uh, it is rare that we have the opportunity for people to be heard since we're not a rep public referendum state. And um, so I, I feel like the final word would be with the people of the state. So I'll be supporting, or not supporting the motion. <laughs> Anyone else? I have another statement. Okay. In reading the University uh, Vermont Health Network, I noticed that they leave out the part that I brought up before about if they refuse to have an abortion, they are going against what this constitutional amendment says. They are. Can you clarify? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I know what you mean. Yeah, I can clarify. It's right up there. It says, it's central to the liberty and dignity to determine one's own life course and shall not be denied or infringed upon. If the universe, if the doctors or that group of people that make the decisions about late-term abortions over there, after 24 weeks, if they decide that the abortion is not going to take place, they are infringing upon <clears throat> the woman's right to have that abortion. And I'm surprised they didn't deal with that in there. Well, the, except UVM, I, I agree with principle, but UVM is not the state. So this would be doesn't the, that doesn't matter to me what they are. Okay. It, it, they're, they're performing the abortion. It could be Planned Parenthood, as an example. If they refuse a woman, they're going against the woman's <coughs> right. What, what, what's trying to be done here is to have personal reproductive autonomy. They're going against that. Um, Tapper, I think you are mis... I, I'm not trying to persuade you to you, change your mind. You're not going on this. No, and, no um, I believe that you are misinterpreting, and I would ask... Misinterpreting? I would, what you... This statement, and I would ask either Bryn, Bryn, if maybe you could help. Sure. So, as the committee heard yesterday, this, I think this might be just sort of a fundamental misunderstanding about what the Constitution does. And the Constitution, as you heard yesterday from the Attorney General's office, acts as a check on state power. So, adding Article 22 to Vermont's Constitution would provide a specific check on state power from interfering with the right to reproductive autonomy. So it wouldn't have an effect on a private institution, a medical facility, an individual. It's about what the state, how the state can interfere with the fundamental right to reproductive autonomy. I guess I gotta make another statement. Okay. <laughs> just, just so everyone knows how I feel. 
when the Attorney General's, when the two people came in here yesterday, I was disturbed personally that they talked about supporting this uh, because that's not what they're supposed to do. Right. They're supposed to come in here and talk to us about the law, etc. So I might as well get that off my chest too. I still say we should have had a judge come. We could have set it up so that they weren't going to be a judge that would be making any decision. It could have been a retired judge just to, to get an idea of interpretation. That's my big hang-up. There's, there's too many unintended consequences here for me. And I voted, by the way, for the bill that still isn't out of that Senate. The clerk shall begin to call the roll. The motion is to not support. Not to move it out. Not to, not, not to move Article 22 out so, of committee. So, so do you think this is a good idea? Well, no. So a yes vote. Means so a yes vote means um, this article goes no further and stays in committee. A no vote um, will move this article to the floor for the legis for the House to decide whether it takes the next step. Clerk shall begin to call the roll. Representative Vaughn. So a yes vote means a yes vote is in support of the motion that you made. May, I may, yes. To keep it here. Representative Haas? No. Representative Brumstead? No. Representative Rosenquist? Yes. Representative Redman? No. Representative Nicole? No. Representative Payala? No. Representative Gregoire? Yes. Representative Noyes? No. Representative Wood? No. Representative Pugh? No. The motion um, to keep Proposition five in committee fails on a vote of eight uh, of three to eight. Madam Chair, I believe we need a vote to move it out of the committee, and I would make that motion. I move that we I move that we approve proposal five. Okay. Is there a second? I'm sorry. Your motion is. I move to I move to approve proposal five. The clerk shall begin to call the roll. Representative McFawn? No. Representative Haas? Yes. Representative Bremstead? Yes. Representative Rosenquist? No. Representative Redman? Yes. Representative Nicole? Yes. Representative Payala? Yes. Representative Gregoire? No. Representative Noyes? Yes. Representative Wood? Yes. Representative Pugh? Yes. Motion to move Proposition 5 out of committee passes on 8 to 3. Thank you, committee, for remind us all of the constitutional process or steps that we have to take. It will be on notice on Tuesday, and it will be on notice. It has to be on notice for four legislative days, so it will be on notice all next week, and it will not come up for action until the following um, Tuesday. So does that mean that there'll be full debate that following Tuesday, like on the bill that we did as well? So no, just on the constitutional well, amendment. Well, just, I don't know what you think I just said that, does that mean that following Tuesday when it comes off of notice, it, it, do we it have a be, full out debate? We will floor? have, yes. So yes, there is a full debate on the Tuesday after Whatever date that is. So the next week, it's the whole week it's on notice? Correct. Right. The whole week. Four days. Four days. And then the next Tuesday. And the next okay. Tuesday, um, I will be reporting it on the floor of the House. And um, there'll be no debate. <laughs> um, and there will be, um, and, you know, maybe there won't be, but there there, there may be debate. And. Um, but there can't be any amendments. There but there cannot be any amendments. So it, so it may be, I mean, I don't know, it may be more statements mm -hmm. um, that people are making as opposed to, um, since they can't, since the amendment um, 
I don't know whether the speaker will say non-germane or whether the speaker will say, sorry, can't do it. Um, there's probably some fancy words to say about that. Um, and um, I believe it is a, it is a one-day vote. It's a one day. It's not a. Right. It's not a. It's it's a it's a one day up or down. Uh, and it is a majority vote. Seventy six. Majority of members. Majority of members. Majority, majority, of, majority of members. members. So um, there needs to be seventy six. Um, Positive vote. Correct. Madam Chair. Yeah. Um, I, I can't remember. But does the purpose, when it goes out to the public, does the, the purpose go with it? No. Just the. When it goes out, um, the only thing that will go out will be um, <coughs> below that. Two. And then Article 22. So after just the Tuesday afternoon? Yeah. It's 76 votes. Mm -hmm. Next year, nothing. The year after is. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Do we, have to, do we have to debate it again? No, no, in the following legislative session. session. Oh, that's right. Okay. The following legislation, the Senate will, the, the process, um, the Senate doesn't, this is not, again, it is not a um, change the language. It is, here's the language, yes or no in the Senate. Here's the language, I mean, and if the Senate says yes, comes to the House, here's the language. Public hearing. Public hearing. Can we get to the public hearing? Another one. <laughs> um, and uh, then, if the House were to vote yes, the next legislative the next legislative session, um, it goes to the voters. The only difference in the Senate, the way I understand it, is instead of two thirds vote, they'd be the majority. Mm -hmm. the in the second year, yeah. 